how many days have you gone to the property? You've been there for three days now? Yeah, I think it's just been three days. Yeah, we made an initial trip on Monday. Cause, yeah, Monday. No, Sunday. Sunday was our first day. Nice. So it was really just kind of saying hellos to the to the land. Yeah. Just kind of getting to know it and just the just the front part. Yeah. Um, it was very like brief. where the house was. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. We didn't really know where the house was until we met with Ralph. Mm. Um, yeah, I started writing a little land journal. We got to meet the neighbor. Oh, that's so cool. Um, the across the street neighbors, their names are Leonard and uh, and Rhonda Brown. They, they, what we learned here is that they really know your last names. You know, they really advertise it. So then you know if you're like a local or not. So then uh -huh. it's just like, oh, oh, this is Nick. He's in Etheridge. Right. They're like, oh, Palmer. Okay, got it. You know. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm just an alien. Don't mind me. <laughs> no, you belong. <laughs> um, That's very cool. So, so what did you do with, uh, when was Ralph there? Was he there on Sunday? Or maybe you should, who is Ralph? Oh, yeah. So Ralph is a, um, a, a very established contractor here. Very trusted and um, very skilled. Mm -hmm contractor he, he seems like a jack of many trades but I initially knew of him as the septic guy um, but he also did the demolition of the old hovel that used to be on this land right. um, a couple of years ago I think and he also was he seems to be involved in um, many projects in Marguerite so he did the neighbor's septic he <laughs> he also does the does work here on the live in tents that we're at Right oh now. wow um so yeah ralph mcpherson the mcpherson name seems to travel far um yeah so so yeah we had a really nice and long conversation with him just kind of um laying here's nick <laughs> uh, just to kind of get develop that plan of where the bunkies the are gonna go the um rockwood bathroom rockwood and the haven hmm. um because right now it's pretty low. So what we found on our first day, just from kind of walking that land, is just like how wet it was. We just we discovered the brook, where the old bridge was, and uh, and it's supposed to be one of the drier seasons too, mm. somehow. Um, and yet it was still like pretty moist. Like it's it wasn't collecting water. We we've we also found areas that were pooling. But they were just, you know, kind of spongy. You walk on it and it's like muddy and squishy. And and it's like far away from the brook. But I think it's just like run off from the highway because it is pretty low. <laughs> um, so we just aren't sure where, you know, whether to put structures there or not. But we think it should be fine because it's still far away from like the the water sources, you know, like the brook. So... You're right. So no, like flooding or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, it's not flooding. Yeah, it's not pooling. And I think it's really, but but it's not dry. So right, we, soft ground. So we, yeah. So then, <laughs> of course, we're doing it completely backwards. Then what are we? We know in permaculture, you know, water access structure, but we're trying to scope out the water, kind of. And then also, there's no road yet, but we're like, <laughs> let's put a structure here and then road later. Yeah. But we already have, we do have a kind of a good idea of where the road's likely going to go. Mm. Um, and today from scoping the land, we did find the brook on the side. And so it's actually pretty cool to see how accurate um, the brook that I drew in the Google Maps the oh, Google yeah. Pro, turned out to be. Um, yeah, it runs down the other side of the property. Yeah, the other neighbor. Not so that's the... not a good place for a road. Right. Yeah. Because it runs like straight up the property, so we can't have a road, you know, parallel to to that. So it has to be on the other side, next Which to the Swallow Banks neighbors. Is also where we planned to have a road. That seems to be based on our conversation with Ralph and our four days, four. Yeah, four, four days, days of, on the land of observations and interacting. It seems to be correct to put right. it there. 
And uh, <clears throat> we talked with Ralph too about starting with the front area. So, and we asked him, I didn't call him yet today. <laughs> I just remembered. Mm. Yeah. Text, but asked him to do what they call pit fill. So pit run. Pit run. Right, right, right. Um uh so like not high grade crushed stone, but just to kind of fill in that whole front area. We he gave us stakes, we mapped it out, and then we're thinking shipping container for storage, the bunkies, and then there's still space to park the trailer mm. for this year and then build a road maybe at the end of the year in the fall and next year the trailer could go in the back of the property oh cool where that big clearing is that's right that see in the, the middle yeah. Yeah, yeah makes sense um and then at the very front of the property since i mean even though they say you know parking and whatever should be at least six meters in he didn't seem like it he had the impression that it doesn't really matter and that no one cares but oh so yeah we're just like well might as well make use of that space then as parking if needed who says it's supposed to be six feet in is that a county it's like a county bylaw thing but we have to really confirm that right interesting oh yes <laughs> so we'll, we'll see but you know parking it, it should be good um yeah. and then um yeah, we were thinking that we could even possibly do the road this year. Because it was the, the clearing. Right. Um, maybe, you know, depending on how our conversations go, but that would be really exciting to, to have that possibility as well. Totally. Yeah. Um, yeah, there were actually quite a few clearing areas that, you know, we're like, maybe the Haven can go here or the Haven can go here. And it's just... And even the Rockwoods, I think, I think there is possibility that we can move it to a more woody area in the front. Right. The Rockwoods are the smaller one. Yeah, the smaller the office ones. ones. The Haven's yeah. the two two story one. Yeah, bunkies. Uh, I'm just um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those are the bunkies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the stable. We also had a conversation about that with Ralph, and he doesn't think, you know, he's saying that. You know, you can try to save anything, but is it worth it? And right. just weighing the risks versus benefits, we are leaning more in favor of demolishing it, even though there's mm -hmm. some history there. And um, use some of the material. Yeah, but we'll likely reuse like the the metal roof because nice. I think that's, that's really great. And there's a lot of stuff in there that oh, the could be very valuable. Um, very cool. Yeah, and then we also found this nice little artifact that. <laughs> just like in the middle of nowhere when Don't did you find that just on our I think the first day yeah first or second day when we were just kind of wandering the woods to cool. see what's, what's there um you know it's like that perfectly rusted it has big wheels and like it kind of looks like a giant you know those clips those uh clips that you put on your in your hair like That's a part of it. like the yeah, how big is it what is it plastic clips like this yeah what is it i don't know all right something on wheels with teeth like with teeth with teeth yeah but they're Whoa. like they're long you know so huh. yeah so we've been curious about it we've seen it on a few properties they're just like it seems really? like just like put them as decorations which we were absolutely going to keep as like the landmark totally looks um, like an oxen drawn hay rack uh i was gonna hey. i was gonna say hey <laughs> I said your grandfather had used one on the land so if it's on your land it's probably his what a great find that's so cool that's yeah. amazing so how long are you there each day like do you kind of have a a soft morning like a, a slow start or do you go right away first thing uh soft morning so far this week yes. yeah we uh um finished ted lasso this morning and Excellent. had some lunch before we went um and yeah it's it's really just been a couple like maybe a couple of hours just to cool. kind of feel it out yeah you know, different insights every day what um, are what's some of the i know you you put this in a sauna but like some of the flora and fauna things that you're seeing 
Um, yeah, there's a definitely a lot of different vegetation that we found in the front versus the back. Where I only I took a little floral journal. Um, you know, in Asanas, I just took pictures of different plants, and I don't know my, most of them. You know, and I'm gonna hopefully utilize some of those plant apps to help identify. But some were yeah. sedum, definitely lots of raspberries, lots of lupins, dandelions some alpine strawberries and those were all that i can recognize oh my gosh that's incredible um otherwise there were a lot of other other plants that grow kind of um four feet tall mm. you don't know what they are they look veronica like interesting but i don't think that's what they are um yeah and then in the further back there that's where all the hawthorns are there are there were some in the front um but it seems like they really like it closer to the cliff. Oh, oh. No, like not so much well cliff, but it's like, you know, at the top part. Okay. And before before going down to the river. I so see. Not, not a lot of water, but yeah, I don't know what, uh, what the microclimate is like there. Um, but yeah, there's a, the, they were plentiful and they are prickly. Yeah. I, yeah tell them you went today we went today yeah. yeah so yeah the goal the goal of today was we went on a quest to find the marguerite river and finding the best trail mm. um, walking pathway so this is not the road but this is where people will probably like hike and um kind of the most foot traffic will be right and in permaculture we learned that um the best way to do that is following animal tracks. So I felt so um, Indiana Jones or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I made a I made a video. I was like, I don't know if there's a lot of animals that walk by, but you know, we're trying. And then two seconds later, Nick was like, hooves, hooves, right in the mud. We're like, oh my gosh, amazing. So then we followed so the hoof tracks, marked it with the marked it. <laughs> the trees with tape like we, like we were going on a hike it felt like yes. such an adventure really because it was so so woody um we had our walkie talkies and um so nick was scoping a different way and then i was scoping the the more woods way and yeah. then we found some poop and got really excited about that and yeah <laughs> in that regard it's not in a nursing way you know, <laughs> an exploratory way um so yeah, more animal signs and then we um yeah we found the brook found that that goes all the way straight to the back of the property so we know we can't build a road there not mm -hmm. sure if i already said that um and that's on our on the i think that's east the east side neighbors okay um yeah and kind of during that journey i Yep, found a bunch of hawthorns, stepped on one, went right through my boot. Through the sole of your your Through the sole of my Not boot. Not like through the side like, canvas part, but like. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So I might have not asked enough permission to <laughs> chop its limb, but it was it was right in our face. So we're like, yeah. like okay, I got this. And then it, it was, they have really big thorns there. How big? Um, probably the, the length of like a, my pinky finger. Whoa. And like how thick, chair. like a pencil? They are like, um, no, yeah. Like, a like, um, not that thick. I would describe it like a, the lead of a pencil, but oh like, my goodness. Yeah. Ooh. <gasps> yeah. So did get in. And the, yeah, they're sharp. Even they went through jackets, you know, even though they're like <laughs> supposed to be like poke proof. Oh my God. Yeah, Your jackets they, were supposed to be poke proof. Yeah, yeah, oh more or less. God. So yeah, they have made it clear that day they do not like to be eaten or touched. <laughs> so proceed with caution. And our na our our um Hawthorn Eco Retreat is named after them. So yes. it'll be a big part of this project. Just be in there but also we'll try to keep them away from people as much as we can yeah they have really delicious berries we did see some some dried ones on on some of the plants and that was really fun and i'm, I'm really curious what they're used for yeah 
Um, I wonder if there are like um, uh, people with traditional knowledge of the land that you're on that might have some insight into, because you were doing some research before on hawthorns and how yeah. they're used and be cool. Yeah, and that's why I was really curious about a lot of um, the vegetation that that was there and what yeah what natural because obviously they're plentiful and native so I yeah, yeah want to know what what use they have you know and not quick into labeling whether they're good or bad you know they're they're just there yeah um, and we did pass through an indigenous village when we were driving oh, what, do you remember <laughs> what it's called no, I don't, but I'll do a quick little Google search. Um, yeah. And I, yeah, I was saying to Nick, I'm like, I wonder if there's some elders here and it would be really cool to, you know, get to know them, see if they would be interested in coming to to visit and kind of showing us what the land is. That the would be that. so special. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. That's so great. Ah! Yeah. So <laughs> we're really excited. How I was, I, I mean, there's just so many different things that you can do, I, I, like all of these possibilities. It feels like you can do so many things and at the same time, you kind of have to wait, you know, for the road or wait to build the bunkies. It's this really interesting mm -hmm. tension of like, there's so much possibility and also hurry up and wait a little, you know, yeah. So, yeah. such an interesting place to be. <laughs> yeah. For the most part, you know, we're just kind of um, taking it slow. Mm -hmm. um, one of, what's one of the permaculture terms, Nick? Small, small and slow solutions mm. is what is what a what that is. So we're really leaning into that this week, you know. I love that. <laughs> and, uh, next and which? And next week. <laughs> yeah, totally. How, yeah, um, sorry. Oh, I was just wondering, like, how has your emotional, your mental health, um, even your physical health, like you've, you drove for so long and now you're getting to be out in, you know, on, on the land. Um, I'm just wondering if you've noticed any, any shifts or any, I don't know, anything that you're, aware of because <laughs> maybe sometimes that stuff just comes really soft and slow too in our mm -hmm. processing but just curious what you've been noticing yeah just been just being out in like nature you know just really feels like it's has slowed down the nervous system for sure mm. um yeah, it just feels so like so connecting and just that's country air mm -hmm. just something healing about that yeah yeah and uh yeah i'm really curious what uh yeah how nick feels mm. the feeler um i think you're feeling too <laughs> <laughs> yeah we've met so many people and um mm. people are so friendly here yeah seems like everyone loves to wave <laughs> but each other, you know whether it's just like when you're in um on the bus and you see bus drivers waving at each other all the time yeah. so, you know, so here you you kind of get that vibe when you're driving the other the driver from across the street will wave at you interesting <laughs> that is a small that's kind of a small town thing sorry yeah, Nick. Big, yeah big 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 thing and specifically it does feel like in the part of Marguerite that my grandparents used to live in. Like, I just notice even when we're staying in Marguerite Forks right now, because yeah. that's where the campsite is. I'm going to drive. So, um, but then going into Marguerite Center and then the part where we're at, like people there wave much more than here. Interesting. I'm going to wave, but as soon as you get into Marguerite Center, it's like, I don't, I'm like, did anyone not wave? Yeah. Everybody does <laughs> there. Yeah, so it is interesting. I feel like as I'm thinking about just like waving at strangers, the only time I would have ever done that would have been 
I, oh, I don't even know. Maybe like if you're in a parade or something, you're just constantly <laughs> waving. They're just waving at everybody. Yeah, but that idea <laughs> that you know, I wonder how that affects community development. How that affects you know how you interact with your neighbors. How that affects you internally too. Like hmm. if if you're smiling and waving at people, does that have an impact on your physical and your mental health? Just yeah, yeah. Curious to think about. Yeah, that's a really good thought, Jess. I mean, I definitely feel more smiley and just like anticipating more, more waves. So I'm just like, even even in the car today, I was just like, I'll just keep my hand up, <laughs> you know, keeping the smile on. So I, I definitely felt joy from it. That's so interesting. Because um, I think about the East Coast, and I'm like, all the happy people live in, on the East Coast, you know, and <laughs> if it's the happy people that are waving or if people are happy because there's waving <laughs> interesting yeah so um, what do you have what do you have planned for like the rest of the week um going back out to the land tomorrow so today we also went to visit my uncle my biological father's brother my uncle's oh. brother. this sad. is again, the second time i met him which is the first time there were too many people so I didn't really remember anyone yeah anyway they were fishing Gaspro oh. on the Marguerite River they gave us two they're in the fridge we were going to make them for dinner but there's not enough time so right. maybe tomorrow yeah. yeah so when Nick was saying um that his uncle Stuart was inviting us to go fishing I was really thinking you know standing on this you know side or like on a lake in a boat and you're just holding the fishing line now they are like fly fishing it was proper like there's a whole system the fish basically are run into their swimming they're swimming on the opposite side of the stream sorry counter to the stream like you know like salmon do yeah they're coming from the ocean into the lake Ainsley oh that's where they will spawn so they're running the opposite way and they kind of stay on the banks and so they have a run for them so kind of brings them into this net this netted area um, because of the way the water's flowing through it he was kind of explaining it and to catch everything but um and then you know they essentially have a line that they just pull up every now and then and there's a ton of them just like like wow. kind of dumped onto the shore um so then they salt them and they send them to, they have some some people, locals use them for lobster bait. Okay. Um, and then otherwise they're sending them to Haiti. And they've had really? this partnership for a long time, like generations. Oh my gosh. It's interesting. Wow. Like. Yeah, I guess he remembers his dad. My, I never like didn't know, I didn't know these people existed. So yeah, um, and so this this grandfather, and he died young. But gr this grandfather, my biological father's father, but he, they, uh, my uncle Stuart was saying, he remembers his dad saying that he remembered his dad fishing Gaspar on the on this river. So. It's a, yeah, they've been doing it for a while. Wow. That's such a, a cool part of your history. Yeah, it was fun to see. Yeah, it's really fun to watch. Yeah. They That's used to come back with a tractor. Yeah. <clears throat> and then all these fish just dump out on the deck and, you know, flopping about. And I yeah. was like, wow. Still a lot That's... of work in there, but, but yeah, there's, and it's a lot now. I mean, they only have a certain window and the only certain hours and certain days they can do it, but you know, they want enough to get up to like, there's a ton of them, but right. they want enough to get up to, to the lake to spawn. Yeah. Um, so they, uh, I don't know what I was going to say. You were to, uh, the question I initially asked was what was in store for you for the next few days or the rest of the week? But this was an adventure. Yeah. For um, today. Yeah, I guess I just wanted to remember to say that. 
I'm glad you did. I was. I <laughs> thought maybe if we went back to the beginning, that we could follow the trail <laughs> of your thought. Who knows where it was? Anyway, um, the tomorrow. Tomorrow's Thursday. Um, it's supposed to rain on Friday, so I think tomorrow's another sunny, bright, warm day. Um, mm -hmm. So I think utilizing that there, I mean, there's there's some work. There's stuff we need to do on the land, but there's also stuff planning things and things we need to do. Basically, we go to the land and then we go to a, the cafe, the dancing goat. Yeah. And then work there for a few hours. So, right. I think that's again probably the plan for tomorrow and making probably our trip to Halifax more concrete because we mm. need to get tools there and get we need to buy tools and also pick some up from my dad and um yeah there's a few other things on our list to do there so I think we need to make those plans a little bit more concrete what are we going to do with the trailer while we're away right I'm going to take it all the way there right um and and hopefully solidify Ralph working on that front area because yeah. really we want to come back and move the trailer there to the yeah. land and be there because I think every day that we've gone I, I think it's nice to be here but it's not as ideal like you can't walk outside and you go explore for a little bit and then come back and then inevitably it's like oh we need this thing where is it it's in the trailer right <laughs> And um, not that we're that far away, but it still doesn't feel worth coming to get in and going back. So totally. Um, so it'd be nice to be on the land. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about being here is that we kind of get to see some of their operation. Like they have the composting toilet, they have a solar shower or a propane actually shower, the, the same setup we have. Right. The, comp, the heater, like it's all I think it's the same one. Mm. Um and so it's nice to see how that works and sometimes doesn't work yeah uh, yeah we were planning to follow their line all the way to their brook to yeah, see how they yeah. pump that water because yeah. our understanding is that they pump water into a tank and then pump the water yeah, to the shower yeah. i kind of want to see that i want to see that set up they set up bell tents today i want to go peek inside so there's just like some things here it'd be nice to kind of see before we go totally yeah. when yeah. are you going to halifax the plan was Friday. Yeah, because it's raining. And yeah, staying there for a few days. We probably want to see the rain as well before we yeah. go, but then to go for the weekend. Um, yeah. Nice. That's uh, awesome. Unlike Calgary, you know, the there will be plenty of rain. We will not be missing yeah. <laughs> the rainy days of um, observing. That That's very fair. Is that where you're going to say before? I, I think I interrupted you. <clears throat> no, I was going to say that we uh, met the owner of the live in tents here yesterday. Um, nice. Yeah, and that was that was pretty fun. Awesome. Yeah, getting to know him, getting getting contacts. He's also worked with Ralph. Ah, oh, Ralph uh, is famous. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> well, there's used to his dad and i think it's marguerite center marguerite valley i don't know sometimes i can't pull apart where one ends but right. his dad had the this, this store so there's his dad's name is also also ralph <laughs> oh, <that's funny. laughs> so ralph mcpherson he's he's the junior ralph um, right. <laughs> but yeah his dad ran the corner store which is actually was across the street from where when Angus and Kay, my bio dad, they when they moved back to Marguerite, they lived like quite close to the store. I thought. Mm. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that they've, they've been around for his family's been around for a while. That's so cool. <clears throat> yeah, and Jess asked a question earlier about how you're feeling this week compared to driving. So, just the oh, shift of being better. Yeah. I mean, I like if we slowed down the drive, I think it would have been more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's much better. Yeah. What are you noticing? What do you notice that's better? Well, I smell better. <laughs> the 
Yeah, that's right. But I think I was like, how much of that was like stress, sweat? Mm. Like, you know, was, <laughs> was that like, was that like a, a stress hormone that I was smelling because I was nervous sometimes driving? Like, mm. yeah. And even after showering. Yeah. Like, we, we got a proper shower at uh at his aunt's place in London and mm. he was still like he was still claiming that he was smelly. Yeah. It's like you know, wow. it's a localized somewhere and then it's like I use body wash. Yeah. So it's, it's <laughs> yeah, it's a pheromone kind of thing, not a cleanliness yeah. kind of thing. It's yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is really interesting. Yeah. That is yeah. interesting. Yeah. Oh, well, now we'll need updates on how you're smelling. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what do you smell like this week? Yeah. Nice. Well, that sounds like you've got like, I mean, such a great introduction to the land and to being present and to being here and getting work done right away with with Ralph. Like, there's, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it sounds like there's just so much really exciting things happening. You're doing mm -hmm. tracking, tracking your way through from the road to the river, looking mm -hmm. at different flora, different species, getting to understand the the nature of the soil. Like you've you've done so much already. It's been four days. <laughs> it's really yeah. it's really amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Any yeah, other thoughts? We're really, we're really excited to share with you all these mm. happenings. It's so cool. Yeah, just yeah, in the it, last four days. And it's yeah, it's just really just that observe and interact principle, you know, just really can't mm -hmm. skip out on that. Just you can learn so much in such a short amount of time. I think it's mm -hmm. a big, big takeaway. And and Rob Avis says, you know, could be years even. Right. And you'll still be learning a lot. So yeah, yeah. that's really cool. That's so neat. Um, yeah, and just felt really feeling really at ease just whenever we get there. So that's like a really good feeling to have. It is a good feeling. Mm. Mm. So cool. Anything else you feel like sharing? I think that's it for now. Awesome. All right. Well, yeah, until next time. Thanks so much. That was so thanks awesome. for tuning in on, on the journey. <laughs> really exciting. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs>